What's up guys, Mike here, and today I'm going to show you how to play Resident Evil 1.5 or Biohazard 1.5 on your PlayStation Classic. It's extremely simple if you would like to know how to do this, but on your computer, Mac OS, or Linux, I have already a video done for you. Check the pinned comment and the link in the description below. I've already covered it. A 2019 updated version on how to get the game how to get RetroArch and actually play it on it and even configure some settings to make it look really good. So we're going to be doing the exact same thing today, except we are going to be doing it for the PlayStation Classic, which you would think is very different, but it's actually not so different. So I have all the links for everything you need in the description below. Feel free to ask me if you need any help. Just saying that I didn't show something doesn't help anybody. Ask me if you need help, and I do not mind helping you out. It's going to be really simple to do. All links, again, in the description below, and feel free to ask me for help. I'm going to be showing you step-by-step -step what to do. You are going to need a flash drive. I'm using a SanDisk 2.0 16GB flash drive. It's very cheap on Amazon. I'll leave a link for it below in the description as well. The exact same one I've had it for years. It, looks, it works perfectly fine. There's a few steps that we're gonna need to take, but the first thing is you're gonna want to download WinRAR. You could also use 7-Zip, but I prefer WinRAR. I think it's a better program. Honestly, it's the same thing. Makes no sense, um, makes no difference, I should say. But download the one you prefer. I prefer WinRAR, so Go to WinRAR, go to Downloads, and depending on the language that you would like it in, you pick it 64-bit if your machine is a 64-bit machine, which pretty much all machines nowadays are, or 32-bit if you have a 32-bit machine. There's also here Linux, Linux 64, also Mac OS, and a few other things. Um, so if you're looking for the English one, you're going to want to click the one right here, WinRAR x64 or x86 5.71 click it and they're going to ask you to save the file the exe file and then you're going to want to install it from there once it's saved i have it already installed so i'm not going to do this but this is the first step you need to do so once you have whether it's winrar or 7-zip installed you're ready to move on to the next step the next step is getting the game itself and then patching it so first thing, I'm again, check the link in the description for the raw file. And any of the, the patches that have come out have always contained a document with the URL to find this raw file. But for whatever reason, I guess no one looks at it but me. Uh, so I am going to just copy the link of it in the description. You come to this link. I'm going to refresh it because I've had it on there for a while. Click download. And you see it's already going to be recognized by WinRAR. Go ahead and save it. So now we're saving the raw file. Next step, and again, link will be below in the description. We are going to download the patch, the latest patch, which is June 8th, 2019. It's titled Biohazard 1.5 Magic Zombie Door, which is what the MZD stands for. Patch 0608-2019. Download it. Yes. Okay. So now we've just downloaded both the raw file and the patch file, the latest patch. There are multiple ones. The first ever 40% build, this one here, came out back in 2013. We've had patches in 2013 itself later on, 2015, 2000, I think uh, 2015, I don't know about 17, but definitely last year and now this year we've had patches. So now we have the game and the patch for it. Now, we, you, you're going to want to go to this link here, which is to the GitHub page. Again, link will be below in the description. As of uh, today, which is September 5th, 2019, a day before my birthday, I might add, this is the latest version of AutoBleam. This is what I prefer. I think some people use BleamSync. I don't even know the difference, to be honest with you. But I prefer AutoBleam because it's very simple. So AutoBleam 0.7.1 Ultimate. You are going to want to scroll down and click AutoBleam 0.0, yeah, 0 0.7.1 Ultimate Full Dot Zip. Click it. It's going to ask you to save. Again, save it. 
Now, one more thing we need before we move on from the browser, web browser. I have this link in the description. This is taken from the Wiki for Resident Evil 1.5. Go ahead and save this image. I think I already did. Yeah, I already did. Go ahead and save that image because we are going to make a custom art. I'm going to show you how to make any custom image you want. I mean, take an image from Google or whatever and put it as your cover art for when you're in AutoBleam. Uh, you could also launch this on the Retro Arch um, version on the PlayStation Classic, but I'm just going to do it on AutoBleam today. I'll show you how to launch it on Retro Arch as well. It's the same thing, essentially. Now that you have all four of those things downloaded, well, five if you can't WinRAR, but you have right here the raw file, the patch, AutoBleam, and the cover art. So here's my flash drive, which is completely empty. I'm gonna go ahead and just show you. So it's FAT32, it, sh it needs to be FAT32, by the way. So if it's not FAT32, go ahead, right click, format, I'm actually going to do it myself right now. You're gonna wanna change the volume label to Sony, and I spelled that wrong. <laughs> you don't wanna change it to Sony in all caps, and leave everything default, or switch it to what I have it, because this seems to work, and you want it to be FAT32. So, I don't know why it removes the thing. So yeah, Sony, start. So it's going to now... Format. Okay, I was trying to get out of that, and it closed me for some strange reason. Okay, now that you have your flash drive formatted to Sony, FAT32, we have only 32 point kilobytes taken. I don't know why. But anyway, you are going to go back to, your, to wherever you download AutoBleam. You are going to want to extract it. And then from the four folders you get from the AutoBleam, you're going to want to drag and drop to your Sony titled flash drive. It needs to be Sony in all caps. I have to reiterate that. It will not work otherwise. But this is, we're pretty much almost done. It's extremely simple to do this. I'm obviously going to show you guys some gameplay to show you that it does run. I'm just wanting to get the computer aspect of it done first because once you get everything done on the computer you do not need to go back you you can go right to your playstation classic and enjoy this if you guys want more tutorials going forward you know i don't mind doing them i'm actually more interested in starting to do more tutorials so uh, any ideas shoot it my way i'll be happy to uh to listen to some ideas and if anything is something that i can actually do i wouldn't mind doing it i'm also going to do a tutorial on putting it on your PSP as well. So I know a lot of people love the PSP. I love the PSP and the PSP Go in particular has been starting to really get popular, which I already own one before it started getting crazy popular. And it's such an awesome portable retro console, even if you're gonna play PSP games itself. It's really cool. So I definitely want, I've already put version 1.5 on mine, so. Um, I wouldn't mind showing you guys how that works. So either way, now we've got on the Sony, on the flash drive, these four folders, which is what you want. Games are going to be where you actually put the uh, the PlayStation games for your PlayStation Classic. This goes for anything, any PlayStation Classic games you put. PlayStation games on your PlayStation Classic, I should say. And of course, my dog now wants attention. Okay. What I'm recording. Okay, wouldn't be the first time. So, you're going to want to now go back to their downloads folder, and we're going to delete these so we don't get confused. And then you're going to want to extract the raw folder, which is RE 1.5 Magic Zombie Door, MZD. So now we have a bin and Q file that are the original vanilla 40% build back from 2013. We want to play the most updated one. So now we're going to extract the patch folder, go into it, 
And there's the patch file is going to be right here with the same title as the folder. It's an X Delta file. So you're going to want to go into the folder within this one, X Delta UI. Double click it, enter it, and there's X Delta UI.exe. Double click to launch it. It's going to be a little program to quickly patch your existing vanilla Resume 1.5 build to the current build or whatever build you want to patch it to. So we're going to open up the folder. Uh, file explorer and we are going to find the patch which is in the patch folder right here make sure this is the name of the title so you can find it easily click it so now the first thing will be the patch second thing will be the actual raw build but you want to click the bin file so bh2.bin double click it so now we've got that now we want to put a place that we're actually going to save the patched version of it because it's actually going to be separate so we're going to save it I'm actually going to save it on the, the flash drive into the games folder because why not oh something I forgot to do you have to name it so I'm gonna name it bh2.bin and patch and it's gonna create the brand new bin it's it's really quick it's just taking a little bit longer because i'm putting it on the flash drive rather than putting it on my computer itself but it's not going to take a long time it should be done in a few seconds because it's not a big file i think it's 170 megabytes which is really tiny so but it's going to take a little bit longer because it's going on to my flash drive which is where it has to go anyway. So pa file patch successfully. We can go ahead and close that out. So now I'm gonna go to my Sony memory, um, not memory stick, flash drive, go to the games folder and you're gonna see it right here. So this is the patch version, it should be 176 megabytes. That's what it is, 176. And we now need to get that Q file. So I'm gonna drag and drop the Q file into the games folder. So now we have let me actually rename this to match it. So I'm going to name it in all caps BH2, which now, of course, it doesn't want to. Uh, well, I know how to trick it. You can just basically. Oh, that was an accident. Come on. Power ISO is a really good uh, program, by the way. Uh, just name it something else and then rename it again. And this time we'll name it. There you go. Um, I double clicked it by mistake, so I tried opening Power ISO. Anyway, make sure they match. And now we're going to make a folder and we're going to title it Resident Evil 1.5. And put the game in the Q, well, the bin and the Q file into that folder. Now, go back to the downloads, whatever you downloaded the image, drag and drop it to games. So now we have the image here, drag it into the folder. And this works with all games on the PlayStation Classic if you're doing it this way. We need to name it name it the same as the Q file. The the image. And it has to be I think it I believe it has to be a PNG file. So, it's the same name now as the Q file, which is also the same name as the bin. It has to be the same name. So, with that, you're all set from the computer aspect. It's all done. The only thing left to do now is load it up on the PlayStation Classic and start playing Resident Evil 1.5. So I'm going to switch over to it and get back to the video. All right. So I did have to check something real quick. So it's not going to say the same thing. Essentially, this is what it would say. It would say, oh, games changed. And it will tell you, oh, that scanned, you know, press OK, basically, to confirm. This is the menu it's going to take you to. It's going to have some really... <laughs> annoying music thank you to the people who made this but the music is annoying um so you're going to want to turn it off by going to select and then where it says background music select it off with the deep you know go down and then go to the d-pad left to or right to turn it off and then make sure you confirm with x to have no music now that being said our flash drive is plugged into the second port of the PlayStation Classic. Now, if you want to use multiple controllers, just as a little quick side note for those interested, um, you don't want to plug your USB into a 
Uh, unless it's a it's a powered hub, if it's a USB hub, you don't want to plug your flash drive into it. You would want to plug the hub into the first port and use multiple controllers like that. But anyway, I'm using the 8-bit Doe PS4 adapter, so I could use my PS4 wireless controller with it. So now we'll go into Auto Bleam. It's going to start the UI, and now it's showing all games. So all I have on my flash drive is Resident Evil 1.5. The rest are the stock games in here. And as you see, it's got the cover art that we put, and it's showing up here. Yes, the serial looks ridiculous, and I don't know how to change that if you can't even change that at all, but that's not what we care about. So I'm going to go into um, settings here, and uh, nothing else I can do really do from here. So we're just going to go ahead and launch it. Let me go ahead and there's a little thing you could do to get rid of that cursor. Okay, so you want to hit select and triangle. Or in this case for the PS4, it'd be share and triangle. And it opens up the hidden menu. And we are going to go to options, go to BIOS and plugins, and go to the GP, built-in GPU plugin. And put that enhanced uh, resolution, I was going to say revolution, enhanced resolution on. And uh, resume game. And I will join you guys after after we get into the game and it skips the intro because uh, there is an intro. I'll probably cut it out. But what do you say we go with Elza here? Now, it's obviously not going to look nearly as good as it would on the computer. So keep that in mind. All right, so I wanted to leave the intro in to just prove that it is the 2019 patch version. And the thing is, it's it looks really good. Like, I'm playing on a 4K TV, a 49-inch 4K TV, and the picture looks good. Um, I do prefer, like I said, to put the enhanced revolution, uh, resolution. I keep saying revolution. And yes, I know there's people who are already saying it. Use the retro arch version. The core is better than, auto, the, than the one built in. And you're right, it is. I'm just showing people if they want to use it on audibly. I'm actually going to um, show some gameplay of it running on the Retro Arch Core. So I'll show you how to run it on that. I'm not going to run it on it in this video. I'll probably put up a separate video of it running on Retro Arch on the PlayStation Classic. But just going to show you that, yes, you can get Resident Evil 1.5 on your PlayStation Classic. And it looks good. It's not going to look as good as the PC, but that's to be expected. Let me see, actually, if I uh, if I decide to put on... Um... Enhance. Let me just get out of this. Okay. It wasn't... I think it wasn't running too well. Uh, speed wise but look when you put the speed hack on as, at the same time with the resolution hack not only does it look good but it plays at full speed it plays perfectly fine looks great and uh yeah you can enjoy re 1.5 on your playstation classic on your tv with a real playstation controller which i think is pretty damn cool and the cover art doesn't have to be the same as mine you can easily pick anyone you want. You could even keep it without a cover art. It's totally up to you. But 
that's the one that I found that I can share. Because I found one and I saved it, but I'm not sure where it's at. So I'd rather just link you guys one that you yourselves can save and upload. But remember, it has to be the same name. But again, if you followed all the steps, you're going to have no issues. You're going to be running this on your PlayStation Classic in no time. Uh, I'm just going to run into this room right here. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed it. So again, this was how to get Resident Evil 1.5 running on your PlayStation Classic with AutoBleam. So what we've co covered in this video is getting AutoBleam to be installed on your flash drive, what flash drive that I use, and basically patching Resident Evil 1.5's vanilla file to the current updated 2019 edition. And of course, showing some gameplay of it running on the PlayStation Classic. So. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I really wanted to make this for quite some time, but I think it was very fitting given that we just got a new patch this year. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will catch you in the next one. Be sure to check if you have not, if you don't intend to download this yourself, be sure to check out my Leon and Elza walkthroughs with and without commentary. I have both the choice is yours. The link will be below in the description as well as the pinned comment. So I hope you guys enjoy it and I will catch you in the next video.